following day we woke up, I of course played with all the goats and the sheep and the cows because I'm obsessed with them. And then we drove out to this man's house that had horses. So we arrived in this little village and he had the four horses waiting outside for us. Uh, the thing about the Mongolian horses is they're actually smaller than a normal horse, but they are known for being wild. And so when we hopped on our horses, uh, they, they gave us the term chu, like chu, 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 which tells the horse to speed up. These horses were actually still pretty wild. Mike uh, started getting a bit of a control over his, and what the guy had instructed us was that if you yell, choo, choo, that'll encourage the horse to start running. But I think all of them start running if you start yelling, choo, choo. But he was doing it when he was directly next to my horse and directly next to Natalia's horse. So all of our horses just took off. And they were going full speed, and we were trying to pull on the reins as hard as we could, but they would not stop. My horse was being feisty also, and it, and it yanked its head down and pulled me up into its onto its neck. And so then it was running and I was holding onto the neck of this horse. And I'm not wearing a helmet or anything to protect me. And that was a genuinely scary moment because these horses kind of became wild for a minute. So we walked over to this monastery and it was all abolished by the Russians. So there wasn't really much left of it, but you can tell that it was beautiful at one point in time. We had to drive 300 kilometers uh, to our, our next nomadic family's home and it's not like back home where you drive three hours, 300 kilometers, you're driving for like five or six hours. So we actually hit a sandstorm and there was, there was times where we literally couldn't see in front of the car. Right, I'm pretty sure that this is the farthest that I've ever felt away from home. And then so we got to our second family's home. We arrived there. There really wasn't anything around, which was really scary. We were told that there are wolves that, that come there. Um, ow. <laughs> Get, that's really deep. First to the heaven. Second to the people of the world for their well-being. Third to the land for feeding us. And fourth for me. <laughs> Dinner, the lights were flickering and the gear looked like he was about to <laughs> blow away on us. We all went to bed and Mike kept freaking me out and saying that there was someone in there. At one, a couple points in the night, the door was open. It was really funny. We woke up in the morning and it was a gorgeous day. So the following day, we did a, a huge drive out to the, what used to be the capital city in Mongolia, which is called Karkarin. So it was actually destroyed in the 13th century by the Ming Dynasty, so the Chinese came in there and, and beat up the Mongolians a bit. It's, uh, it's pretty cool to go and check out, and it's part of most of the tours that you'll do through the Gobi Desert, because there's still these really old Buddhist monasteries that are still intact and have great old Buddhist artifacts and uh, literature and scripture, and, and the buildings themselves are from about the 1500s. as simple as it gets. Really keep it to the basics. You don't have to get any more complicated than that. We were all kind of scared to be in this van and we thought it was going to flip many times, but it didn't. And our driver was incredible. He just, man, I trust that guy. Best driver in all of Mongolia, Ogi. So on the way driving to go to this nomadic family, we had to cover a lot of crazy terrain. Uh, but we got to this frozen river where we're looking to cross it. And, you know, the van's really heavy. 
and our driver goes out and he starts walking on the ice to see how thick it is, which immediately doesn't give me the, an indication that this is a terribly safe thing for us to do. Natalia and I ended up actually throwing some rocks at portions of the ice, and the rocks were going right through the ice, so that area was definitely not safe to, uh, to cross. But he made a, a phone call, drove us up the river a little bit, and then here we go, we're driving across a frozen river in our van. I thought the van was definitely gonna go into the drink, but you know, we cruised across. And so at this point, it's, it's all trust to the driver and to the tour guides. We arrive at this beautiful place here with this family and they're so welcoming. They have dinner ready for us and we had to take some photos of the sunset because it was stunning, like the mountains were all pink and it was gorgeous. Another thing we had to do is help the, uh, the families herd the goats at the end of the day. So we were chasing these baby goats around and they're actually super fast. It's, uh, they're, they deke you out because they're running for their life so it's really hard to catch a goat. Oh, kisses. <laughs> Too big. <laughs> one of the one of the most adorable moments I've ever experienced. There he is, really.